Many qualitative researchers use interviews as their research methodology. This methodology allows them to understand the stories and experiences of those whom the researchers interview. By asking questions, researchers seek to gather information that becomes research data. As the interviews continue, that data is compared to other data on the same topic as the researcher seeks to draw some conclusion about an event or group of people. Interview data are also useful to supplement quantitative data. The potential for integrating qualitative interviews with other forms of research offers a dramatic opportunity to expand our collective understanding of the human condition. In this chapter, we will consider three major interview approaches and some ethical questions. The first approach is in-depth interviews. Researchers use in-depth interviews to learn about a topic from the interviewees through one-on-one -on -one sessions. Such interviews are usually face-to-face -face or via the telephone, although remote or virtual options are increasingly common. Researchers who use in-depth interviews also tend to conduct the interviews in the field, which is the naturalistic settings of where they find their interviewees. In-depth one-on-one interviews are useful to eliminate group influence as the individual is responding to the questions without concern about how others will view his or her views. However, in-depth interviews are particularly time-consuming and expensive. Other concerns of in-depth interviews are reliability and validity. One example of in-depth interviews is the, in the academic setting is the retrospective interview technique, an approach that aims to help individuals reconstruct events and circumstances in a chronological order. The technique asks participants to graft and discuss the changes that occurred over time in some aspect of their relationship. Another version of the in-depth interview is the known associate interview. In the known associate interview, the researcher interviews individuals who are known to be friends, family, and or business associates of a particular person. The goal of this approach is to gain some insight of that person as part of a larger research project about them. Third, another form of in-depth interviewing is field interviewing. Field interviewing is a semi-directed conversation in which the researcher seeks to elicit the participant's point of view on the topic. The interviews are typically conducted in the participant's environment or field. The participants will be more comfortable in that context, and the context also helps to provide cues for directing the conversation. The interviewer starts out with a general idea of the topic to be covered, but draws upon comments and issues raised by the participants to direct the discussion. Field interviews can also be used as a first stage research tool prior to conducting a more formal research project. They can be particularly useful for this purpose when working with cultural or ethnographic research. Market researchers sometimes use extended telephone interviews as an alternative to focus groups. Because each interview is conducted on an individual basis, the extended interview eliminates any group influence on an individual's opinions and statements. A less time-consuming interview method is the focus group. Focus groups are the second approach considered in this chapter. Focus groups gather groups of people, usually between 10 and 15 participants. Instead of interviewing a single participant one-on-one, -on -one, focus groups allow researchers to gather information from many people at the same time. To be effective, however, a good facilitator has to skillfully know how to guide a discussion. 
a clear research question and a relevant sample that can provide insights into the topic are also important factors for researchers to effectively use focus groups as their research methodology. To help the facilitator focus on the discussion, a note taker may be included as a two-person research team. The note taker will observe details such as nonverbal communication. Another distinct disadvantage of focus groups is that the discussion may be dominated by one or two participants who are more vocal or more willing to share their views. This could make other participants feel less comfortable to express their opinions, especially if they have an opposing perspective. Such dynamic could result in forced consensus. Thus, it is useful to use focus groups first to have a general idea or to gather preliminary data on a topic and then use in-depth interviews to gather additional data or to verify the preliminary data. The third approach discussed in the chapter is participant observation research. This approach allows researchers to collect data on the, on the individuals whom they are studying in those individuals' naturalistic settings, as well as to conduct informal interviews. For example, if we are interested in understanding what people do during lunchtime at the cafeteria, we could do that by observing people in the cafeteria during lunchtime. Although participant observation is useful to collect information on the researcher's topic of interest as it is developing, participant observation research is also very time consuming. Additionally, the researcher may also ask many questions as a newcomer or outsider to the natural setting. Such interviews are usually conducted during informal situations and are not recorded. There are ethical concerns about another person's right of privacy if the, if the interviewer did not have prior permission to record the interview. Another drawback of a participant observation research is that it requires extensive training as the interviewer should not be disruptive to the normal activities at that natural setting. After interview data are collected, Researchers systematically analyze the data to make sense of what they have gathered. Typically, qualitative researchers may use content analysis or thematic analysis. The simplest content analysis is to count occurrences of different categories related to the topic that the researcher was studying. Thematic analysis is the grouping of common ideas related to the topic. Ethical concerns such as invasion of privacy and confidentiality are important to consider before, during, and after the interviews. Researchers often collect informed consent from their participants before they conduct the interviews so that the participants know what they are participating in and the topics that the researchers want to learn from the participants. One criticism of focus groups is that it can be used to man manipulate people's political behaviors and consumer buying habits. However, there are some who think that politicians and marketers have a legitimate use of focus group to understand how to deliver messages to their targeted audience. And finally, an important note to add to this chapter is that qualitative interviews, particularly interviews conducted by scholars for research purposes, are typically not conducted so that scholars can generalize the findings from the sample to the broader population. For research purposes, the intent is usually not to identify a representative sample for qualitative research. Instead, the samples are purposefully identified because they have characteristics that are relevant to the topic that are investigated by the researchers.